Quest Facebook Live, coming to you from the beautiful resort, the Kahala Hotel and Resort. Today, yeah, today we have a special guest for you, streaming all the way from Spain, Dr. Andreas Fallman. Hi, Dr. Fallman. Hi, guys. Today, we're going to be talking about one of my favorite subjects, especially as it relates to these amazing animals, and that is science. Yay for science. Yeah. <laughs> we love science here, and so do our founders, Dr. Ray Stone and Dr. Jay Sweeney, who founded the company over 30 years ago to really promote education, science, and conservation. And to date, Dolphin Quest has committed over 5 million in resources to different scientific and educational endeavors. And so we have participated directly in over 125 different studies. Dr. Fallman is gonna be talking about just one of those studies. Dr. Fallman studies dolphins and whales around the globe and of course, right here at Dolphin Quest. And he's gonna be sharing with you some of the work that we do here, as well as what this funny little device, this fancy device called a nematac is about and how it's vital to his research. So Dr. Fallman, I'm turning it over to you. Thank you very much. Um, so what this is, is basically what we call a pneumotachometer or a flow meter. So what we do with this is we measure the respiratory capacity of these animals and how much they are able to uh, breathe. And we try to understand this because we want to understand, first of all, the health of animals, and then also we want to understand their physiology. So by doing this, we can then understand how they can die for very long times and how they can, the lungs are behaving when they're diving really deep. So um, some of these things uh, cannot be done at other places, but with trained animals. So the advantage we have with that is that we can do controlled studies and the in a stress-free environment. So the animals participate when they want to. There's some days when they don't participate at all. So we're sitting there waiting. But this is this is part of it. This is this amazing relationship between the trainer and the animal, and then we are communicating with the trainers about the research that we need to do. So this is it's a re excellent research team with the animal, the trainers, veterinarians, and then the researchers. So what we're trying to study, and, and one of the things we've done at Dolphin Quest is trying to understand the respiratory capacity of dolphins specifically, but we also done this in other species. And dolphins and cetaceans, whales, they have this amazing capacity to exhale really, really hard. So when they do these really hard chops, is what we call them, these forced exhalations, they can generate flow rates that are about 10 times higher than a human can do. So they have an- Dr. Foreman, do you wanna see one of those right now? Yeah, yeah, can, can you show us that? Yeah, sure thing. <laughs> So you can just hear how hard they're blowing. And this is really important for us because what we can do with this, this is similar to what we do when, when you go to the doctor and you look if you have asthma or pneumonia and they put a spirometry in your mouth and they say, take a deep breath and then exhale all you can. So with these trained animals, we can then develop these tools and then we can study animals in the wild. Then we can then go to different locations and we can see if animals have more or less lung problems and how they're doing in different situations. So for example, if there's an oil spill like there's been, it, it was in 2010 outside Louisiana, outside New Orleans, a lot of the animals were swimming around in oil and then they get lung disease after that. So we can go to these places and then we can assess before and after things are happening and we can see how well the environment and the animals are doing. So I want to turn turn it over to you guys. How is it to work with researchers? This is my favorite question. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's it's pretty amazing because really we have the same goal. Researchers, they want to conserve wild species and do their part to learn more about them so that measures can be put into place. And here with Dolphin Quest through our educational and up close personalized encounters, we have the same goal. We want people to come here meet our dolphins and really be inspired to take care of the earth. So it's two different um, different places really coming together for the same goal. So I really enjoy working with you folks. 
it really provides a lot of value to what we do here as uh, their caregivers. It also provides a lot of uh, variety for their day to be able to add some fun scientific challenges into their their uh, day and, and we present them with different projects that we want uh, to have. And um, yeah, we'll do a lap here in just a moment. Um, so it's, it's pretty awesome. Communication, of course, is important. And it's neat because you folks will come to us with um, a goal in mind. You want to learn this about their lungs and you have some idea of how you think you could make that happen. So then we talk with you and we collaborate and discuss, okay, well, what is it really possible? What is it possible for our dolphins to do? And so um, that's where the collaboration and the communication really comes into play is trying to figure out how we can accomplish your goals with our amazing animals here through behavioral endeavors. So I love working with researchers. All of the ones I've worked with here are amazing and um, wonderful to work with. I never feel any pressure to push our animals or do anything more than what our animals are wanting to do. And the truth of the matter is they're really calling the shots anyway. So <laughs> <laughs> we're going to do um, one of the part of your trial here. So right now Lono's been breathing into the nematac. And if you were here, Andreas, just to let everyone know, this would be connected to a bunch of wires. And then you'd be sitting there on the dock with your computer uh, at, collecting all of the data. And then part of that study is not just to have him sit here and breathe, but also to swim while holding his breath. So we're just gonna do a little sample of that here and then you can talk more about that if you want. All right, here we go. <laughs> so the goal here is to have him hold his breath until he comes back to this name attack. And for me to catch the breath. Yay! Awesome. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, so, so this is a project we're doing in collaboration with Duke University. And there's a, a collaborator there called Austin Allen and also with University of Michigan with Alex Shorter. So what we're trying to do is we're using this equipment that we developed and what we can do with this, we can determine how many calories the animals are, are using for different activities when they're resting, when they're swimming, when they're diving. And we also attach suction cup based biologging tags. So basically we're putting a Fitbit on the back of the animal and then we're comparing, there you go. There we so go. We're, we we're, sure. This is basically a Fitbit and it tells us how, how much the animal is moving. It tells its activity. And then we're measuring the metabolic rate, how many calories the animal is doing for different activities. And then we can correlate the two. So we're basically developing a Fitbit for animals. Then we can bring this to wild animals and we can then see how animals are behaving in, in the wild. And we can do that at different years, at different times of the year, and then see how many calories does it cost to catch a fish? How many calories does it cost to swim away from a boat or swim away from a predator? So we can try to evaluate the metabolic consequences of human interaction, of changes in the environment, and, and these kind of things that are only made possible because we can validate these tools with animals under human care. Awesome. We're going to do it again. On over here, we're going to get a different dolphin here for you to see. Now, it's pretty amazing. Uh, Lono sitting here, just hanging out, really uh, making it look all very easy, which it is <laughs> just sitting here. And but the behaviors that you're witnessing here, us being able to breathe, for us being able to put something over his blowhole that he can only breathe out of, also putting a tag that sticks on his back, um, that actually requires quite a bit of trust and relationship. And so, um, as I was mentioning earlier, we collaborate with scientists to try to figure out what behaviors would be required of our animal so that you folks can collect your data. Well, part of that is really taking these very small baby steps or successive approximations. So the end result is this amazing behavior you're seeing here, but it did take a while to train. And we wanna do everything at our animal's pace and make sure we're not pushing them to do anything that they don't wanna do. So it's, it's pretty phenomenal what our animals have accomplished here and we're really proud of the work that they've done. 
Yeah, you guys, you guys are phenomenal. It is, it is an amazing place to be. And, and for all us also, we're learning from you guys to communicate our science. And this is something that you never get when you go to school. You don't, you, we cannot, we are not very good at communicating what we're doing to the public. But since we're doing this in the face of the public, you are teaching us and guiding us on how to do this. So it's it's a, an amazing collaboration and we're really proud and, and happy to be part of it. Well, Andreas, I think you've done a great job communicating what your science has been about. And thank you so much for joining us today, all the way from Spain. We really hope to be working with you soon, one of these days. And you take care, Andreas. You guys too, thank later. you. Thank you to all of our viewers out there who are watching us and supporting us. If it weren't for you or the people who have joined us in our encounters, we really wouldn't be able to make this science possible. So thank you to all of you for, for really supporting Dolphin Quest and what we're about. And if you want to learn more about the science that we do, please visit our website. And yeah, we are hoping to um, also, that's right, Facebook Live every day. Come visit us tomorrow as well. So be safe, everyone. Take care. Aloha and a hui ho until we meet again. Bye, guys. Bye. Good job, buddy. Wow. Yeah. <laughs>